Justin Haley to Hendrick Motorsports after 2025. And Dale Jr. had one heck of a night in his low NASCAR Xfinity Series race of the season. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. So it turns out maybe not everybody gets a CW, at least not in the way that we thought they do. Yeah, they might actually get the CW, but that doesn't mean that the NASCAR Xfinity Series race on Friday night at Bristol was on the CW for them. I saw on Twitter that some people had to watch paid programming. Some people had to watch high school football, which sounds downright awful to watch that level of football on TV. Just mistake after mistake after mistake. And some people like in Indianapolis, apparently don't get it at all, like on YouTube TV or something. So Turns out maybe not everybody gets it, but if you do get a digital antenna or have a digital antenna, you should be able to get the CW. Now, if your local CW provider does not carry the, the Xfinity race, that's, I don't know what to do in that situation. Write them, write your congressman, your councilman. I'm not really sure in that situation, but it is unfortunate. Some people did not get to see Dale Jr.'s lone NASCAR Xfinity series start of the season potentially even his last ever NASCAR Xfinity Series start Friday night at Bristol, and he had one heck of a time on Friday night. Rolling off from the 13th position, Dale Jr.'s night immediately went haywire. No, he didn't catch on fire this time, which was a major plus, but he couldn't hear the team. So they came in under caution, swapped out earplugs, could, still couldn't hear them, swapped out helmets, nope, still couldn't hear them there. So he basically drove the first 50 laps of the race, not being able to hear his spotter TJ Majors, and was just essentially clearing himself like he was in a dirt race. In in the process of the helmet swap, Dale Jr. managed to lose his glasses, which he actually thought he knocked down onto the floorboard of the race car. No, turns out they were still in the old helmet. So during the next pit stop, they handed his glasses through to him. He immediately smashes them onto his face. And I'll be honest, if I was driving without my glasses on, I'd be driving like Helen Keller out there if she was a real person. And I wouldn't be able to see a thing. I would have to have stopped immediately and had my glasses handed back to me. It would have just been some blobs out there and you're trying to navigate through that. Like, remember when you were in school and they put those drunk glasses glasses on you and you're like, ah, oh, this isn't that bad. And then as soon as they put you like behind the wheel of like the simulator, you're like, holy crap, I could never do this. Uh, yeah, that's what it's like driving without glasses, at least for me. I know some people don't have it as bad. So Dale was finally able to get that. And then about 120 laps into the race, keep in mind this 300 lapper, uh, they handed him a radio that he could clip onto his suit so that he would be able to hear the team. And then he promptly dropped that radio down onto the floorboards. And when he did that, it jacked the volume all the way up. So he seemed like he was a a youth out there just blaring music, except it was just blaring TJ Majors into his ears. And I'll be honest, sounds awful. TJ, nice guy. Don't want him blared into my ears. I've had that happen on iRacing and it made me irate. I can't imagine it happening in real life. So Dale was asking the team to speak softly over the radio uh, because it felt like they were screaming at him the entire time because the volume was jacked up. And I'll be honest, what else could have happened to him on Friday night? Is his seat going to tip over inside the race car? Is a thread from his suit going to go flying out the window and then, you know, get wrapped around the rear tire and it's going to unravel his suit like it's a Looney Tunes cartoon? No, thankfully, the weirdness ended at that. And he basically spent the last 93 laps of the race battling it out with Ryan Newman Truex on track, who was making his car super wide, not making it easy on Dale at all. Dale wasn't making it easy on him. And they had a really good battle. You know how the Truexes and the Earnhardts, well, specifically Dale, go back a long way. Obviously, Dale gave Martin Truex Jr. his start in the series. And then obviously, Martin went on to win a championship. Ryan's raced for them at times as well. And then after the race, they got out and had a good handshake and laugh about it. And it was just good fun racing. SVG immediately went over to Dale Jr. and had a good laugh with him said that he was trying to get Dale out of the car when he was giving him uh you know the door bang on the cool down lap there just all around good time Sheldon Creed didn't give a damn about his interview with the CW after the race he was like and the second place finish he goes I don't even care about finishing second I just want to go have a beer uh with Dale and that's after Chandler Smith came over and was complaining to him like he was Patrick Mahomes during that game against the Bills where he was trying to tell Josh Allen that it was all the rest and Josh Allen's like dude I don't I don't give a crap about this. We won the game. Stop your complaining. Go sit down over there. You get every call in the world. Sheldon had the same reaction on his face. He's like, bro, shut the hell up. Like, <laughs> I don't want to deal with this right now. So for Dale, he then got out of the car, talked to the media, and then spent uh, the next few hours just drinking beer on pit road all the way up until two o'clock in the morning. So he finishes seventh, drinks beer on pit road until 2 a.m. Not bad for a guy that's about to turn 50 in a couple weeks. Oh, last thing real quick from the Xfinity Series race. If you saw Justin Allgaier, you saw the reciprocating saw, the Sawzall, whatever you want to refer to it as, get stuck underneath the front splitter of the car and dragged around the racetrack. And the booth was obsessed with finding out whether or not this DeWalt Sawzall still worked. 
So they went down and found it in the pit area, and it does in fact work, as Marty Snyder pointed out here. I'm sure the Milwaukee fanboys have been silent ever since then. Actually, I know there's going to be comments that are like, oh, Milwaukee's the best. I'd still stick with Milwaukee. Ah, whatever. I'm a DeWalt guy. Got DeWalt stacked out in the garage. Um, phenomenal tool, and apparently you can drag it around a racetrack, grind half of it off, and it still continues to work, which is great product advertisement for DeWalt, if I'm being completely honest. And before we move on, remember that there is now a Break Hard blog. Link is in the description below, trying to post a, you know, a weekend preview as well as a recap and probably something during the week. And also remember, head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. It very much feels like will Alex Bowman return to Hendrick Motorsports next year is about to become NASCAR's version of will Mike McCarthy return to the Dallas Cowboys because it seems like we're going to have to do this whole song and dance once again next season because during his media availability on Friday at Bristol Motor Speedway Brad Keselowski said the quiet part out loud go ahead and take a listen aware that they were gonna make this switch starting next week and something that you even have a I don't know that you would have a voice in but you have any uh, Justin had a, a career opportunity that you know there wasn't anything we could match you know to be a part of, you know, Rick Hendrick's deal there and, uh, you know, and, and what that means for him after 25, you know, that's that's their announcement to have. But uh, certainly everybody, I think, can respect and understand that. To be a part of Rick Hendrick's deal there and what that means for him after 25, but that's their announcement to have, is pretty telling from Brad because it lines up with all of the silly season things that we had been hearing up to this point. Justin Haley, of course, was announced the number seven car, but Justin Haley ending up in the 48 for next season was very much a real possibility over at Hendrick Motorsports. And if you remember back a few weeks to Door Bumper Clear, they were asked on there, how many drivers have Hendrick cup contracts for next season and the answer was more than four which was very much true at the time and still is true now justin haley is that fifth driver and that's not out of the norm cup series teams have signed more drivers than they have seats you know for before that's not something that is new that's not something that is rare that has happened a bunch of times before but in this situation it is a bit curious so i guess the question is is justin haley actually an upgrade over alex bowman and i would argue that it's not i think alex bowman is very much a better race car driver than justin haley and that's not taking anything away from justin haley i think he's a very formidable driver he has 15 top 10s in his nascar cup series career he hasn't ever driven with a top team he did almost a full season with spire in that 77 car he was over at college racing which of course we know is a mid-tier team lower to mid-tier team and then obviously with Rickway racing which has taken a step up this year but he's still 32nd in points and he has shown signs at times of you know elevating that team but Alex Bowman is still an eight-time race winner and people are arguing that like oh he's not living up to his teammates which I don't you know a hundred percent disagree with like consistency he could be a little bit better but when you look at you know wins he and Chase Elliott had the same amount of wins over the last two years. So it's hard to argue that, you know, Alex Bowman shouldn't be in that ride and Justin Haley should. Here's where things I think get maybe a little bit interesting. Justin Haley's family owns Braun Mobility, which are the um, handicap accessible vehicles, the ones that have the wheelchair lifts in them and things like that. You've seen them, Chrysler Pacificas, Toyota Siennas, you know what I'm talking about. They make those, they design, they build those vehicles. Could this be a B2B deal between Braun Mobility and the Hendrick Auto Group? Obviously, Rick Hendrick owns a plethora of automotive dealerships. Now, could it be a B2B deal? And that ends up getting Justin Haley into that car? Very much could be. Um, I don't actually know if it is or not, just thinking out loud here. Because when you look at it from a number standpoint, Alex Bowman is the better driver. And don't get me wrong, apparently Rick Hendrick and other people in the industry, not even just Hendrick Motorsports, but I mean, RFK was as well, are high on Justin Haley and his abilities. And maybe that's what he needs. It's just that top tier ride to really have his coming out party. But for right now, it seems like Alex Bowman is still the better option in that car. And he will be in that car in 2025, barring something absolutely incredible you know, wild happening, which it's not going to, but it seems like we're once again going to have to do this song and dance next year. So let me know in the comments what you thought about Dale Jr. and his return to the Xfinity series on Friday night at Bristol. Plus of what do you think about Brad Keselowski's comments on Justin Haley? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.